Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. Today's topic is finding count of consecutive missing values only at start and at the end of the sequence using SAS arrays. To understand this title, let's quickly look into the example below. In the example below, we have 13 variables, but we are interested only in variable var1 to var12. And I have pointed five arrows to indicate that we want to find or we are interested to count missing values only when they are at the end. Here we have five missing values at the end or count of missing values at the beginning that you can see in the case of id equal to c. And also when the id is h, we have missing values in the beginning and also in the end we have two in the beginning or start and two at the end which means we have total four missing values and also in the case of when id is j we have all of them as missing values so these are the scenarios we will be interested in and let's also quickly look into scenarios where we have a missing value that is only one in the beginning or start we are going to ignore we need to have consecutive values that means at least we need to have two of them now let us look into how we are going to solve this problem before solving any problem as i always mentioned it is very important to develop a strategy that how we are going to solve this problem strategy for this problem is very straightforward and simple First, we need to create a variable count underscore front and then we should start checking from beginning that is from starting to the end and while we are looking into if we find a missing value we will add one to the count and if we found a non missing value we are not going to check anymore and if we have only count of one means there is no consecutive value then we are going to change it into zero now we are going to do the same thing that is we are going to create a new variable count underscore back and now we are going to see from the back if there is any missing value then we are going to have a count of one if there is a non missing value we are not going to check anymore from and and if everything is missing in the case of idj we are just going to check from the beginning itself we are not going to check from the end and then we are going to add our count from front and our count from back variables and we are going to keep this into a new variable total count so that we will have our result now let us see how these verbose statements we can put into the code i am not going to do everything in the code in one shot but first what i will do is i will briefly explain about sas arrays and then I am going to discuss about how to do it from the front and then from the back and then I will put the code together. Before going into those details, let's quickly look into SAS arrays. SAS arrays are nothing more than group of variables and this group of variables are known as elements. And let us quickly look into the syntax of SAS array. A SAS array starts with the keyword array and then followed by array name and number of elements that is number of variables we want to have and all the variable names we mention in our array statement followed by semicolon this creates our array now we can access all of these variables by using this array name NU1 here means var1 that is in array NU the first element is var1 second element is var2 
so NU1 means we are accessing var1, NU2 means we are accessing var2. This kind of code helps us to access all of variables by simply doing a do loop. Here I am having a do loop wherein I am doing do i equal to 1 to 12 and then I am writing a code if NU i equal to missing then NU i equal to 0. So, when i is 1 means I am accessing var1. When i is 2 means I am accessing var2. So, this kind of array and do loops helps us to access all the variables easily by just having an array name and then looping through each of this element by writing this kind of syntax. I have made it very detailed video on SAS array topics. The link for the same I will give in the description below. Now let us quickly look for 30 seconds this particular code. Here I am saying if NUI equal to missing then NUI equal to 0. So when I is 1 we are accessing var1 and if it is missing we are going to change it into 0. In the same fashion we are going to check each row and in the each row we are going to loop and whenever there was a missing value it was converted into a zero. So this loop once it completes the first observation it does it for second observation and then does it for third observation and finally it moves through all the observations till the end of file or till the end of records in this particular data set. Now let us get back to our main topic. Now first let us look into how we can write the code for checking from the front or checking from the start. Here I want to focus on couple of things. Here I have changed my variable names or the syntax little bit. Instead of writing var1 to var12 I have just mentioned var1 hyphen hyphen var12. Whenever you have consecutive values, you need not mention every variable in array statement. All you need to do is you need to say var1 dash dash var12. It is equivalent to earlier code what you have seen. And the first step here is we need to create a variable count underscore front and we need to initialize this variable with the value 0 here and then we are going to loop through these particular variables using array name. Here we are saying if NUI is missing then count underscore front equal to count underscore front plus 1. What does this do? Whenever we are starting if there is a missing value, what it does is it adds up 1, means it is going to add 0 plus 1 and it moves to the next variable and then if it has one more missing value then it will add one more and one more and one more and also in my code if you can see if the variable is not missing then I am saying to leave the loop which means once it finds a non-missing value it is going to go off means it is not going to check anymore or it's not going to do anything more. Now let us try to understand this by looking into third observation. In here if you see var1 is missing that is when i is 1 it is going to check that there is a missing value then it is going to add count underscore front plus 1. So now the count underscore front has a value of 1. And then var2 also has a missing value. It is going to add one more. It is going to become 2 and it is going to become 3 for var3 and var4 also is a missing. So it is going to become 4. And it tries to loop to 5. But if you see in here 5 has a non-missing value. So in my code I said whenever I have a non-missing value to leave the loop. 
so we are not going to check anymore and then we are going to leave the loop here the count is 4 and also i want also you to look into this piece of code wherein we are saying if count underscore front equal to 1 means after we have looped and we have found that our count underscore front is 1 it means we have only one missing value in the front so what we are going to do in that case is we are going to change that count underscore front equal to 0 that is the case of observation number 2 where we have var1 as a missing value and then we will have count underscore front as value of 1 and then we are going to do or we are going to convert into 0 back because we just want only the consecutive missing values and we will ignore if count underscore front is equal to 1. Here I also want you to focus on one simple thing is I am also dropping this i variable and once this code is run this is the result we get in here. Now that we have looked or we have analyzed how to do the checking from the front now let us look into how we can do from the back and here i am not going to go into very much detail but i am just going to tell you what are the important or different points from checking from the front so again the code is pretty much simple the major important part here is now i am creating a new variable wherein this variable name is count underscore back and I am initiating it with 0 and the highest important point is here here I am doing a do loop but I am starting from the back that is from var 12 to var 1 how I am doing that I am doing by giving do j equal to 12 to 1 by minus 1 now let us see what this does when j is 12 in our if statement it becomes if a new j means a new j becomes a new 12 which means we are accessing var 12 and then we have started checking from back and then we are doing pretty much the same thing what we have been doing before that if you find a missing value we will add one to our count underscore back or we will leave the loop now once we have done with j equal to 12 i am saying to increment by minus one that means now once the loop for 12 is done it is going to go for 11 now this nu j becomes 11 which means we are accessing var 11 by doing j equal to 12 by minus 1 what we are doing is checking the missing values from back and also if the count underscore back equal to 1 then we are saying count underscore back equal to 0 that is if we have only one missing value we are saying that please make it into 0 if you look into this the code is pretty much similar to what we have been doing for checking the missing values from the front the only difference here is the loop the way we are doing it in the case of while we are doing from the front what we are doing is we are doing from 1 to 12 and we are incrementing by 1 in this way we are accessing the elements from var 1 var 2 to var 12 that is in the front whereas in the case of checking from the back for missing values we are starting from 12 to 1 but we are incrementing by minus 1 that is we are started to access from var 12 and then we are going to var 1 and now let us bring all of this together in here i do not want to go back and discuss everything what we have discussed earlier but i just want to discuss couple of important points which we have not discussed earlier if you see here i have brought everything related to count underscore front and count underscore back 
in here wherein you can see that we have count underscore front equal to 0 and count underscore back equal to 0 and also we have code to check for missing values from the front that is while we are doing from do i equal to 1 to 12 and also we have the code for checking it from back wherein we have do j equal to 12 to 1 by minus 1. One important point here in this code I want to mention here is here what I am doing is one additional step. If count underscore front is equal to 12 then I am saying to leave the loop. What does this mean? When we start from front to end if we have all of the missing values which means all of the missing values are 12 we don't want to again do it from the back because we have already got all the missing values we want and if all of them are missing we are saying do not do anything for count underscore back and just keep it as it is that is to zero and leave the loop and also we have the same code what we have done earlier wherein if we have only one missing value we are making our count underscore front equal to 0, count underscore back equal to 0. This is the pretty much the same code we have seen. And then what we are doing finally is we are adding our count underscore front and our count underscore back to get the final count and we are dropping the variables which we don't need. Once we run this code, this is the result we are going to see. Here I want you to focus on three observations observation number 2, observation number 3 and observation number 10. If you see observation number 2, we have only missing values in the back and there are 5. It captures that and also we have only 4 missing values in the front that is consecutive missing values. Whenever I say missing values, I mean consecutive missing values and then we are capturing that number in here. I also want you to focus on 10 wherein everything is missing I have captured exactly 12 missing values and actually I wanted to emphasize on one last observation that is observation number 8 here we have two missing values in the front and two missing values in the back and if we add them it comes to 4 here you can see that our results are exactly as we have expected and here what I want to tell finally is by making a strategy and then writing code for it we were able to solve lot of problems and finally I want to tell one last thing before ending this topic here if you see I have mentioned number 12 number 12 everywhere this is a little bit of hard coding I can definitely avoid this so that this code can be used for any number of variables in here I need to do couple of modifications whenever I use a new 12 in array statement I need to mention star and when I am doing my do loop instead of 12 I need to say dim function on array name and this kind of thing I have described earlier in couple of videos and link for the same I will give in the description below. I have not done the same here just to keep this code simple but it is always good to not have hard coding and by looking into those videos you can easily modify this hard coding part. That's all for this topic. If you have liked this topic please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. Thank you.